It's Karen at the Cool Tools Studio, and I'm here today to introduce you to enameling on our new Cypress Copper Clay. With the holidays coming up, I've been feeling kind of festive, so I thought it would be fun if we used some of the holiday templates that Cool Tools offers alongside our Cypress Copper Clay and Thompson Unleaded Enamels to make some ornaments. They can either exist as just ornaments, or you can add an ear wire to your pieces to make them earrings. In this specific video, I'm going to be making these pieces and we're going to be using the light bulb template. But there are plenty of other options that you can do using the techniques that I'm going to show you today. For the clay working portion of this project, you're going to need a clay hydrator. I've got here a nugget of cypress copper clay. I've got some clay thickness rolling frames, an ultra clay pick, a precision hole punch, and a clay roller. And then in this video, I'm going to be using the holiday bulb template but Cool Tools offers all sorts of other seasonal templates that you could use instead. I've also got a tough card, some cool slip, and since we're going to be using cypress clay, which is a base metal clay, it's good to use gloves in a bottle as well. So I'm going to start with some cool slip. And that should be plenty. And since we're going to be enameling on these bulbs, I'm going to be using a three cards thickness rolling frame. Three cards thickness is good for enameling. If you do two cards thickness, it'll be too thin to support the enamel. I'm going to put my cypress copper clay in the middle there and roll it to the three cards thickness. This clay behaves really, really nicely. If you'll notice, there's no cracking on the edges. It's got a really nice kind of smooth, silky surface to it, and it's got a nice elasticity to it that I also really like. Now that I've got my clay rolled to three cards thickness, I'm going to be using my holiday bulb template to cut out the largest bulb. Got my ultra clay pick for that. Press straight down as I cut along that edge. Now that I've got my outline pierced, can get rid of my extra clay there. Look how cleanly that cut. And then I'm going to use my precision hole punch to punch the hole that my little ornament can hang from. All right. When you're drying the cypress copper clay, if you want it to remain flat, it's best to let it dry naturally. If you put it in a dehydrator or in a hot plate, it's going to have a tendency to curl. With something like this, if I wanted to rush it along, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the dehydrator and then let it bend a little bit. You can easily mallet it flat once it's done firing. The cypress copper clay is fired with a two-phase firing process. For the first phase, you're going to full ramp up to 650 and hold for 30 minutes. You can fire your pieces in that phase two ways. One option is to place your piece on a steel firing rack that's supported in your kiln by kiln posts. Another option is to place your piece on carbon in a steel firing container. It should have an inch or so of carbon underneath it, but it does not need to be covered by carbon at this point. You can use either coconut or coal carbon. After the first phase of firing, you're going to move on to the second phase of firing. For this step, you're going to full ramp up to 1600 and hold for three hours. The second phase needs to take place in carbon. I've got a steel firing container here that I've placed an inch of carbon on the bottom. You can use either coconut or coal carbon again. When you place your pieces in, if you're firing multiple pieces at once, you need at least a half inch in between the pieces. Once your pieces are in the carbon, pour more carbon over top to embed them. You want to have at least an inch of carbon on top of your pieces as well. When you're firing, don't use a lid. Since I sped this piece along and used a hot plate to dry it, it got a little bit of a bend to it, but that's totally fine. I'm going to use a rawhide mallet and my steel bench block 
to flatten it back out. So just like that, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna go over to the sink and prepare it for enameling. Before you apply enamel to your piece, it needs to be perfectly clean. We're gonna clean up our copper with a medium scotch brite and some surfactant. It's a little bit of water. I'm gonna use some circular motions. Give it a scrub down. And then I'm gonna add just a drop of the surfactant. And this just helps to degrease. If you have something on your fingers or anything like that, it'll help get the grease off and your enamel will apply evenly. What you're gonna look for is you wanna see the water sheet over the copper. And what that means is when you're putting it under the water and pulling away, the water will stay over the whole surface of the metal and it's not pulling away from any edges or anything. That means it's clean and doesn't have any grease. We're gonna go ahead and clean the other side too. Now that our copper's prepared, we're ready to move on to the enameling. And here's what we're gonna need. I've got a sifter. You're gonna need a brush to use with your Scalex. And then I've got some clear fire that you're gonna dilute one to one with water in a sprayer. I've got some hard fusing clear, some medium fusing clear, and then pick a color that you would like to use for your ornament. Before you apply enamel to one face, you're gonna protect the other face with Scalex. This'll keep that side from producing a bunch of oxidization while it's in the kiln. Give it a little shake before you open as it sometimes will settle. Just gonna brush some on. You wanna make sure you get to all of your edges, but it doesn't have to be super thick. But you do wanna make sure that you're not seeing any copper through it. Once it dries, it's gonna look like this. And then you're ready to flip it over and enamel on the other face. We're gonna start with applying a base coat of enamel. I'm using hard fusing clear, but you could also use 1010 white. I'm using hard fusing clear in this video because it's a little easier to tell when the enamel has fully fused to the copper when it's transparent. We'll take a look at that more when we're firing, but for now, let's just apply the enamel. So I have my copper piece here with the scale X on one side, and we're gonna be applying enamel to the other. In my bottle, I've got a one-to-one -one clear fire water mix that I'm just gonna gently spritz over the copper. You don't need a ton. So now I'm gonna be putting my hard fusing clear into my sifter. And I'm working over paper because it's gonna go all sorts of places other than just on your copper. And it's a lot easier to put it back in the containers if you're sifting over paper. We're just gonna sift on. Try for as even as a coat as possible. Any irregularities in the thickness could lead to cracking. It doesn't have to be super thick. You just wanna make sure you're not seeing copper through it anymore. Once you've got your enamel applied, you're gonna set it on top of a trivet on a firing rack and let it dry. If you were to put this piece directly into the kiln, you could get some cracking from the moisture evaporating out while it's firing. If you're trying to speed up the drying time, you can place your piece on top of the kiln. Some of the residual heat will help it to dry more quickly. After a couple of minutes or so, you'll be good to fire. I've got my kiln set to 1500. You can fire these enamels from 1400 to 1500. I'm gonna pick it up with my fork. I'm gonna go straight into the kiln. You're gonna be in the kiln for about three minutes or so. 
I'm using flux so you'll be able to see when the enamel has fully fused. It'll be a very bright color. I'll pull it out a little under fired so you can see the different steps. So I'm pulling this out a little early because even though the enamel has glossed over and looks smooth and it's starting to brighten up, you can still see some dark patches. If you were to pull it while the copper is still red or has some dark patches in it, your enamel will not be fully fused to the copper and it'll chip off in consecutive firings. This is looking fully fired and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it from the kiln. Once your piece is out of the kiln, allow it to air dry. Never quench your enamels. Once it's cool, we'll move on to the next step. My enamel has cooled, so we move back over to the sink and the scalex should mostly just flake off. If you hadn't used scalex, your piece would be covered with kind of just a it would have turned black on you and it would be really hard to clean up the surface for your next step of enameling. But that just flaked off and now we're going to use our scotch bright and our surfactant again to clean up this face for enameling. Even though we're only decorating one side of the ornament enamel, you need to put enamel on both faces of your copper. If you were to only put enamel on one side, it would eventually crack because the enamel creates tension on your piece. So we're going to go ahead and enamel the other face now too. So since I've got counter enamel on the other side, I'm ready to put enamel on this face as well. Just like before, I've got my clear fire and water mixture that I'm going to mist on before sifting on some more hard flux. Try for the same thickness that you had on the other side. Just like before, I'm going to move this over to my trivet, allow it to dry, and then fire it in the kiln. Now that I've got a counter enamel and base coat of hard flux on both sides, I'm going to add some color to my piece. I'm going to be working with opaque cobalt blue, and I'm going to sift that on just like I did the other layers. I'm going to again start with our clear fire water mixture. Look at that brilliant blue. He's ready to dry and fire just like before. Since this isn't hard flux, which was a very high fire color, it won't be in the kiln nearly as long. Keep an eye on it while you're firing. After I fired the blue on one side, I went ahead and put blue enamel on the other side too. I like it when there's a flash of color on the back side of my earrings as well. Now that I've got the blue base layers down, we're ready to add silver foil. So we're ready to add our silver foil accent and when you order the silver foil, it's gonna come in a book with each page pre-protected by these kind of little pink sheets in between. And this is really good foil. Some foil you'll like breathe on it wrong and it will fall apart. But this foil's got some nice strength to it and that'll make your life a lot easier. So we're gonna cut the foil to be the little accent that's gonna go on the top there to look like the metal part of the bulb. So I'm just gonna place my bulb on top of the foil and then kind of give myself a little square. And you don't wanna to cut too much extra but if you do have some that you have to cut off little pieces later, you can always reuse those on other projects. So I've got a square generally the side that I'm going to need there. I'm going to place this out of the way. So now I'm going to trim my foil just a little bit to kind of get rid of the excess there. It's easier to cut from the inside out. If you were to cut from an outside and pull in, even though it's kind of the natural tendency, 
your foil might kind of bunch up some before it cuts. So I'm going to save that square for another day. Looks like I also probably can trim a little bit here. And then all the other extra can kind of wrap around the edges. And if there's any more you have to remove, you can kind of scrape it off. Okay. So once you've got the kind of general shape of the foil that you're going to try to apply, you're going to brush down a little bit of clear fire onto your piece. You don't want or need a ton. Just a little bit will do it, and you can put this onto a cup, whatever you want. I just have this handy. It's just a way to get it out of the bottle. And I'm gonna just get a little bit on my brush and brush it only where I'm gonna be putting my foil. And this is pure clear fire at this point. I haven't watered it down or anything. That's why I'm using it straight from the bottle. So then you're gonna pick up your foil, just kind of stick to you and place it. And you've got a little bit of time before it kind of starts drying and sticking where you can scoot and adjust. And then I'm just gonna kind of use my finger to gently kind of come around the edge and push into those grooves that I had cut into the clay to really kind of adhere foil and burnish it down, but also kind of remove the extra edge that you've got there. And then there's some extra that's coming around on this side. And if that was going to drive you mad, you can come back with your X-Acto and kind of gently pull and remove some more little flakes. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then once all the extra foil is removed and it's looking good, we're going to want to flip it over and then there's a little hole that you're hanging from and just kind of try to find it just by pushing and then I'm going to make that hole in the foil too. Once you have your foil placed and your hole established, you're ready to fire it. You're going to want to fire this so that the blue enamel refuses. We're not adding enamel at this point. The refusing of this enamel will adhere the silver to the existing layer of enamel. Now that my foil is fired in, I'm going to apply some medium fusing clear. Since I used hard fusing clear for my base coat, I'm going to want to move to medium fusing clear. If I were to use hard fusing clear again, since it was my base coat, when the new coat would fuse, the coat underneath would rise through the color. You also need to apply enamel on top of your foil to not only protect the foil, but also because I'm going to be using fine line black on top of the foil. And you cannot apply fine line black to foil. There needs to be an enamel underneath it. I've washed this enamel and we have plenty of videos on how to do that, but basically it means I'm going to be working with only the larger, more transparent particles of enamel. Usually I don't worry about it, but since I'm going to be applying the clear over top silver and I want it to be very bright, I am going to be working with washed enamel. Just like before, we're starting with our clear fire water mix and we're going to sift over the whole piece so we're spraying over the whole piece. Again, it might be tempting to be like, oh, I'm only having to protect the foil, so I'm only going to put enamel there. But that would make your enamel thicker there than down here. So you need to cover the whole piece with clear so you don't get cracks from the inconsistent thickness. It doesn't have to be a thick coat. And once you get a nice even coat on, you're going to move to the kiln and fire until you see the surface even out. Now that that layer of clear has been fired on, we're ready to add our fine line black. 
The fine line black was used to make these little strip accents on the piece to represent the threading on the bulb. Fine line black is great for outlining elements or adding a really high contrast sharp black to your pieces. It comes in both a powder and a liquid, but today we're going to be using the liquid. And it's kind of a sort of, I don't know, kind of tarry, very viscous material. And sometimes it settles a little bit and you can either just use the end of your brush or maybe you'll want to have a popsicle stick but you'll kind of want to give it a stir before you pull some out. And a little bit goes a long way. So that'll be plenty for this project. And this looks like it's a pretty good consistency, but if it looks kind of dry, or if as you're working it dries out, you can add some lavender oil to it to kind of get it back to a nice consistency. But this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of stretch some lines out on the tile so you can see how it's not really bleeding out from the edges. If you add too much oil, it'll spread and you don't want that. But you also wanna be able to feel like it's spreading nicely. If it's not spreading, then you do wanna add some oil. All right. So now we're going to apply the threading to our piece and if you accidentally mess up with this or you're kind of shaky and you don't have the steadiest hands, once it's dry you can go back and scrape off the excess really easily. So it's a great way to get precise lines, but if you kind of mess it up at first, don't worry about it. So I put my threading from my bulb on and then like I said there's kind of some a thick spot right there that I can clean up once it's dry. So we're going to let it dry and then I'll show you how you can use a pick to clean up any excess. It's really easy to get a crisp line when you're cleaning up once it's dry. I've just got my clay pick here and any kind of pointy implement will do, but you can just scratch away any excess. If your line got too thick, or if you accidentally got a little wide at one point, you can just scrape away the excess. So it's a great way to get a really nice clean line on your enamels. I'm going to go ahead and scrape this clean, and then I'm going to fire it. When you're firing these, you're looking for the fine line black to get shiny. If it's matte, it has not fired into the enamel yet and will scrape off of your enamel. So once it looks good, you're going to fire it in the kiln. My fine line black has been fired in and the easiest way to make sure it's fully fired in is to scratch at it and see if it goes anywhere. If it does, then you need to reapply it and fire it again. If not, then your piece is finished and good to go. I made one and that can exist as just a pendant or an ornament like these do, or you can make a second one and attach them to ear wires as earrings. There are so many other things you can do with the techniques that I showed you today. You can use stencils alongside the enamel. You can lay down the foil like you did for the top, only as part of a pattern under your enamel, and you can use that fine line black to outline color. The cypress copper clay enamels beautifully and I've had a lot of fun with this project. I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.